be a lot of contact hours of studying. I definitely experience imposter syndrome as well. Some days I have to embrace failure and get rid of perfectionism. Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is May and I'm a final year vet student at the University of Cambridge. And today we'll be talking about the 10 things to know before vet school or 10 things I wish someone would have told me before I started vet school. Thank you for being here and let's get right into it. So number one is to learn how to write smart notes. So in vet school, you'll be learning loads of different content across all the different domestic species and there will be a lot of contact hours of studying and a lot of um, lectures that you'll sit through. I know this is the boring bit about vet school where you have to sit down and study but it is so important and there'll be loads of exams that you have to sit in order to get to the next year so it only makes sense to refine your studying methods so that you can whiz through those exams, breeze through those exams and do well. So top tip is to just pay attention in class. I know this just sounds so basic but your lecturer will be presenting the content in a way that it is digestible and understandable. <laughs> what is going on? They will also point out the things that will come up in exams. So try to resist the temptation to skip lectures and then be like, oh, I'll catch up later. I'll catch up later when I read the handout. But bear in mind that the handouts they give you might be so dense and full of extra information that you don't really need to sift through. So I think that, personally, I think that if you go to the lectures, you note down the points where the lecturer is like, okay, this is important, this will come on exams, or you know, this is the common conditions we need to take note of, that will be able to fine tune your focus on the topics that are important to know, and then you will be able to study more efficiently. Another good resource that I find is the NPR Study Strategy Life Kit podcast that I'll link into the description below if you just want to, you know, plug it in and listen about how to study better. So the second one is how to revise. As I said, you'll be assessed loads of times, there'll be loads of tests, MCQ or written tests, and you have to know this knowledge if you want to be a vet, so it only makes sense that you fine-tune your revision method to what works for you best. So, for example, should you listen to music when you study? For some people, it can work. For me, I realize as much as I love listening to lo-fi tunes, and like it's so chill, it's just nice, a nice study vibe. It doesn't really help me because I get distracted and I don't really take in the information that I am studying. So recently I've been studying without music and I find that it's actually so much better and I am less tired from that. Another tip is to change up your environment when you study. Pick an environment that helps you focus. So if you work well in the library, then you know, go to the library. If you find that sitting in your room is a bit distracting because your bed is there and like no one can watch you procrastinate and you need that peer pressure, yeah, change that environment up. But if you can't leave your house and you still want to find some accountability, I have a study with me video. Hopefully that can provide some accountability or you know, give you some study vibes. Um, yeah, to help you. Third thing is to get a planner. When you start vet school, there'll be loads of events that you want to join, like, you know, university societies and things. And there are a lot of lectures and labs and practicals to keep um, keep in track of. So get a planner or use your Google Calendar app on your phone or Apple Calendar or whatever. So four, as a vet student, we will be required to complete work placements or EMS placements. So it is essential to pick these EMS placements according to your future employers, especially if you have a visa requirement if you are an international student because the more time you spend with that practice as a student you get to know the staff better and then they will be able to see that you know if you're a competent student you know you have good attitudes they'll and they know you it'll be much easier later down the line when you're trying to find a job and they'll be like oh yeah we know you you've worked for us for you know a few weeks and stuff so you know we're more likely to hire you i wish somebody told me this when i started because when i found ems placements i was just finding Start for any place that would take me because i have location restrictions and i don't have a Car. So, you know, if you're studying vet school and you are finding placements, this is something to bear in mind, you know. Tip number five is to be aware of your mental health because vet school can be very intense. There's a lot of workloads, a lot of exams, and as well, if you want to have a social life and if you want to uh, be involved in societies or high level sport competitions and things, it is possible. I have loads of friends who do that and, and loads of friends who don't do that as well, so it's definitely fine. But I think it's to be realistic about uh, how much you can take during term time and be aware of your mental health. So um, I'll signpost some really useful resources, especially if you're a Cambridge student, there is a whole website dedicated to this done by the Cambridge University and the CPL Cell Mind Cambridge um, resources that you can definitely check out. In first year, I wasn't aware of my mental health at all. I didn't really think that it was an issue to consider. And then I realized um, a few years now that, you know, it is important to check in with yourself and it's important to ask for help. 
Which comes up to my next point, which is ask for help. There's no shame in asking for help, although you may feel very uncomfortable doing so in the first place. Because I used to think that everybody was just coping fine, you know, they're going about their day-to-day -day times, they don't really look like they're struggling, they, they seem to be excelling well in exams, and then there's me struggling or lagging behind. I start to feel like, oh, imposter syndrome, am I just, you know, not cut out for this? Did they make a mistake? And that is not helpful thinking at all. So ask for help, ask for help from your um, friends or ask for help from your lecturers or your tutors. In Cambridge, you will be assigned a tutor which handles your non-academic things. Uh, so you can go to them and ask for help. At the vet school, we have our own welfare team. We have the welfare officers there for help as well as the pastoral team where you can send them a message to be like, um, I'm, I'm struggling in this area, so and so. Put your email down and then they will contact you. They find the most suitable person to uh, contact you and give you help. And also the university counselling service. The university counselling service at Cambridge is free and I feel like more people should use it. I haven't used a lot of it myself, to be honest but I think that it's a useful resource that everybody should know that is there. Number seven tip is collaborative efforts. So when you get into vet school, you are in the same boat with all your friends and there is really no need to repeat to get better results than your friends because I think unlike medical schools, in vet schools, they don't really rank you based on your results. And to be, to be frank, I've spoken to vets and none of them have said like, oh, I've got a first in at the end of the degree and I got a 2-1 like nobody really cares as long as you have that degree that degree means that you are a qualified vet and what matters more is your attitude and your approach to things rather than whether you remember the optimum pH of silage or something like that so yeah so during rotations my rotation group and I have come together and formed a google document where we write down the notes of the things that uh, we've discussed throughout the day with the vets the cases that we've seen because when you're on the go you can't really take notes at the same time because you know you're doing stuff and you're listening to the vet and at the end of the day you tend to forget most of it so if there's four of us each of us only have to remember 25% of what happened during the day and then we can have a good google document that helps us keep track of what happened and it's good for revisions personally group study Stop. sessions work the best so if you're working together with your friends you know quizzing each other it's just much more fun and much more enjoyable so i would highly recommend getting out of that competitive mental state and into that group collaborative efforts mental state Next tip is sleep, sleep, sleep. Sleep is so important. <laughs> Basically, don't try and wear being busy or being, you know, sleep deprived as a badge of honor because you just end up being tired and it's bad for your health in the long run. So try and sleep as much as possible if you can so that you have enough energy to go through the next day and, you know, take care of your health. So I would recommend getting an eye mask or earplugs if you are living in a corridor with people who are very loud or who are who are staying up partying all night so you know eye mask and earplugs good 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 investments so the next one i want to talk about is imposter syndrome so imposter syndrome is a psychological pattern in which an individual doubts their skills talents or accomplishments and has a persistent internalized fear of being exposed as a fraud. Be aware of imposter syndrome. It affects almost everyone and anyone, and you are not alone in this. And I will signpost some resources for you to read if you are worried about it. I definitely experience imposter syndrome as well. Some days I have to remind myself that, look, you got this far and you got the results. So, you know, don't feel bad or don't feel like you are not deserving of it. It is still a work in progress, I must say. So, you know, hanging there and know that you are not alone. And lastly, the tenth thing I want to talk about is to embrace failure and get rid of perfectionism. Start your computations. <sighs> like, growing up, we've always been taught to achieve good results and we've always been praised for our achievements and we've been sort of, you know, brought up in this environment where your achievements are almost tied to your self-worth and then when things go right, it's great, but when things go wrong, we we can't cope. So I'm here to tell you that it is fine to embrace your failures and take it as a learning experience because everybody makes mistakes. Everybody has mistakes. Everybody has those days. 
everybody fails sometimes and that is fine and the only way to improve is to get back up again and try and practice that skill or revise for the exam and then you get better at it so try not to so try not to get stuck when you face your first stumbling block if you find that you don't get it right the first time tell yourself that you know you're just learning a new skill don't be too hard on yourself and also get rid of perfectionism because perfectionism can sometimes paralyze our actions and we don't take any action to do anything because we are worried about failing i'm here to tell you that it's okay to fail and even if you fail it doesn't it doesn't matter because in the grand scheme of things if you take one step forward and you know improve yourself to get better and get better progress you will be fine and i think I have an 11th thing which is to try and care less about what other people think because at the end of the day you are living your life and you don't have to worry about what other people think whether you're trying out a new thing or if you're failing in something just work on yourself and be kind to yourself yeah that's it so I hope you found this video helpful in any way and that it can help you adjust into university life or vet school life. If you want to check out more of these type of videos, I have one where I talk about the five things I wish I knew before starting vet school and also check out my other vet school vlogs to see what being a vet student is like at Cambridge University. And as always, stay safe, take care and I'll see you in the next video.